Hey guys, Cam here from Xano, and today we're going to be demoing building AI agents inside Xano. I'm super excited to be going over what this looks like, as we'll now finally be extending that MCP ecosystem, that agentic era, where we'll be able to create agents. Now, what is an agent? That's a great question. An agent is kind of like normal business logic you build normally, but it's a little bit more dynamic and flexible because we actually use, say, ChatGPT, Claude, or other AI models behind the scenes to decide what functions should be executed. We like to call this fuzzy logic because just like a fuzzy search, it's meant to be flexible and handle more natural language to achieve that desired end result. So, we don't have to necessarily just rely on conditional statements. Now, to give a real-world example, a traditional function stack follows these pre-programmed rules. A lot of, if this user is 30 days old, then do this. Or if a user is subscribed within seven days, then do this. Now, what we have here within our tool set, I've navigated to our AI section and to our tools, you can see that we have a create a retention log get current retention offers, get subscription info, and get user info. Now, we'll take a look at this, and we'll go ahead and see that inside our function stacks, these tools are pretty simple. They are typically only one thing. Here were a lot of database requests. So, get records, add records, and more. You can, of course, get a little bit more intricate and, you know, do more with your business logic, but what we'll demonstrate here is that we're going to have a very simple, straightforward system that this agent will be able to use this user's data, the full context, such as their subscription length, payment history, and more, to decide which retention strategy is going to work for this user. We're going to create an agent, a retention bot agent, that will combine all of these tools here, and, um, well, we'll see what that output looks like. It's going to adapt its approach based on the conversation flow. Now, this agent doesn't just follow a decision tree. It actually reasons about what would work best for each unique situation within the bounds of what you'd be allowed to do. It's very similar here to how in, uh, how a human would help you out. Now, the best part about all of this is that building it inside Xano is super easy. So let's go ahead and actually do that. Enough talking about the tools and about what it is. Let's go ahead and actually build. So on the left-hand side, I've selected AI. I'll go ahead and select my agents. Now, now that I'm on the agent page, I'll be able to actually go ahead and add an agent. I can either select this blue button here in the middle or the blue button here in the top right and add an agent. So for the name, we'll go ahead and get started and we'll call it a churn reduction agent. For the description, it analyzes a user's subscription status and it determines if they're eligible for a retention offer or if they should just be canceled. For our model host, we'll go ahead and use Google Generative AI. We'll go ahead and keep this max steps at five. We found that this is a pretty healthy number for how many steps an agent normally needs to take to be able to complete a task. For our system prompt, we're actually going to go ahead and update this. Let's go ahead and remove it. Now, before we begin updating our system prompt and our regular prompt, you will notice here that up above we have our agent settings, which shows this template syntax with curly brackets and then either using dollar sign args or dollar sign environment, we then have the ability to use dot notation and specify the actual key for the value we want to proceed with. So we can make it dynamic, and that's ultimately what we'll do here. Now, I'm not going to make anything dynamic in the system prompt, but I will go ahead and paste what I have on my clipboard, which is you're an AI agent that intercepts user cancellation requests and helps assess if a user is eligible for a retention offer. We also specify that if they aren't, we need to go ahead and proceed with the user's request to cancel their subscription. So we're going to go ahead and factor that in. Now, we also have the actual prompt or the user prompt. Now, for our user prompt, this is going to be what we're actually using for the data or what data we're passing in. So the system prompt is always going to be here and it's going to say this is what the system is responsible for. But the user prompt is going to be how we pass in the user's data. Please process this user's request. And then using this template variable, we have our dollar sign args dot user underscore message. We'll show how we set this up actually in the workflow in just a moment. Now, structured outputs, we'll go ahead and keep this disabled. They're a bit interesting here because really, normally in an endpoint, you would set the response, but an agent is going to be responsible for the response here. You can go ahead and change that response based off of the schema you set. You can go ahead and add an output schema of texts, integers, and all of these field types. And intelligently, the AI will understand what you're setting and will return those values. Now, for us in this example, we'll keep it disabled, but we will continue to go down. And what we'll also see here is our API key. This is going to be one of the most important parts of the agent setup flow. 
This API key is going to be necessary to connect to your host. In this case, we're going to be using the Google Generative AI, or Gemini. We'll go ahead and save it in our environment variable, that is the API key, and I've already done so. So I've gone to Google, and I've created an API key, and I've saved it here within my environment settings. From here, I can go ahead and use my dollar sign environment, and then set what I've called Google as the actual key. So environment.google will load here that API key. I don't need to hard code it. It's able to be added via this template. My model uh, is going to be Gemini 2.5 flash. My temperature, we'll go ahead and keep this at, I like 0.2 personally. Temperature is going to help with uh, responses. Now, there are other things, of course, that we could set. We're going to leave it just like this. And now we're going to go ahead and click save. So now that we have our agents defined, or now that we have our agent defined and we have the prompts and all the values, we can go ahead and add tools. Now, I've already created the following tools so our agent can help with those retention efforts if they're available. This includes getting a user's information, getting their subscription information, retrieving a current retention offer, and if the user accepts, it'll be logged here for human intervention to process. So we can build additional tools from the tools section here if we so decide. And the cool thing about these tools is that they can be used in your MCP servers or your agents or both. So from your agent, now we can connect any tools and make it available to the agent here via that connect tool you would see me select. So now that we have our agent built, we just need to call it. And it is that simple. We've set the name, the description, we've set the system prompt, the user prompt, and set that environment variable and a temperature. From here, we just need to call it. So the way that we do that is from another function stack using the call AI agent function. We'll navigate to our API group, our agents, and this endpoint here by the name of retention. The user will pass in a user message. Fantastic. Now, we'll go ahead and add a function here. This function we'll find in AI tools is called call AI agent. And it allows me to select that particular agent I've created. So my churn reduction agent, I'll go ahead and select it. So we can see here that our arguments, it's going to be accepting that argument. Here it shows in this blue tip that we can configure this dynamic content for our agent by that argument value, that template value within either our user prompt or our system prompt. We'll go ahead and set it as an object. So the argument is going to be one object. If you have multiple arguments, you'll add multiple key values within this object. For us, we're going to be passing in user message because in our prompt, that's what our argument or our template value is. It's args.user underscore message. We'll also go ahead and pass in our input as the value to this user message. As a placeholder, I like to go ahead and provide it a character so I can use that use filters. I'll go ahead and confirm that. And once it's confirmed, I'll simply find that value that I need to update here and I'll update it with that input. So user underscore message is going to be being passed that user underscore message. So let's go ahead and call this agent. We're gonna go ahead and pass in a message and we fortunately have an example here. We'll click this run button to open up our run and debug where I'll paste that value in that I wanna use. This value is going to be, hi, I'd like to cancel my subscription. My email is layla.romero at dell.com. Fantastic, so, okay. We'll go ahead and click this run button. The agent is going to use these tools. It's going to go ahead and process all of these things, and then it'll go ahead and give us a result. So it's going to take a couple moments, and we'll then see what happens. Okay. Well, we can see a result. I understand you'd like to cancel your subscription. Before we proceed, I'd like to offer you 10% off your subscription. So would we be interested in this offer? Now, that's fantastic. So what happened? We have these steps here. It's an array of steps. And we can see that there's four steps here. I'll open up these steps. And we can see that each step has a call to a tool. And for each step, we get to see that we're making these tool calls. Awesome. So we can see that we've gone through the get user information, get the retention efforts, so on and so forth. So the agent sent the prompt, including the user's message and the list of tools to Gemini. Gemini read that information, called our tools to get the user's information, subscription information, and the list of currently available offers from our database. So we can actually see this here, not only in our run and debug through the steps, but our request history. By selecting our agent and going to our request history, we can see we've gotten the user info, we've gotten the subscription info, and we get the current retention offers. 
it goes ahead and then logs to this retention inbox where we can see here we've offered them 10% off a lifetime subscription or 20% off if they renew today. So we're giving them these two options based off of the table that has these offers. Now, we haven't needed to create any pragmatic logic. What we've done is created a system that our AI can use where all it really does is use these tools that query this data. Now, of course, we're adding a record here in our create retention log, but getting the current retention offers, that's just querying records. Getting subscription info, that's just querying the subscription based off the user's ID. Getting the user's info, that's just getting the user information based off their email. And this was passed in in our text. So we have our first agent working and saving us valuable time and money as it not only saves our users from cancellation, but does it without any intervention from us. And it does with the power of an AI model behind it so it can think and reason through the information presented. If we wanted to extend this agent, maybe we'd try to get more information about why the user is canceling and surface some documentation or a link to book a call, whatever makes the most amount of sense based on the situation. But the cool part here is that we don't need to strictly define what would make sense. We're trusting our AI model based on guardrails we set. It knows what's best. And so the AI is able to process this user's natural language instead of taking them through some exhausting set of questions that might not even help them feel like their concerns are being heard. It's really the best of everything we can do for them. And we're staying ahead of our own curve for our own processes internally. It's a lot easier, a lot faster to be able to go ahead and use AI to do these things for us. Now, there's a ton more you can do with agents, and we have a lot more content on the way. For now, if you need help, let us know in the comments or reach out to us via the Xano community or hit us up in the support chat by using the option in the lower left-hand corner. Thanks so much for watching and happy building.